Party up the party then we mash up the place Mash up the place Big tree on the bed Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. It's your girl Jan. If you're new here, please join the family by subscribing. If you already subscribed, thank you so much for coming back always. I miss you guys and I hope you've missed me too. So today I've got some food for thought for you guys, real food for thought, and I really hope that you leave feeling empowered after you've heard everything that I have to say. So I was invited about two weeks ago to speak at a Rotary Club in Uganda, and I was asked to touch upon youth empowerment. Now, when I delivered this speech i gave it to a very small crowd of people like 30 people and i was like no 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 more people need to hear this message because it speaks volumes and i think it can really be helpful to a lot of people out there so without further ado if you see me uh looking down a lot it's because i spent literally hours <laughs> writing this speech and i don't want you guys to miss a word of it because um, I had really good feedback from it and I think a lot of it if not all of it will be very beneficial for you guys um, so I'm gonna be reading it essentially okay now um, I have been asked to touch on the topic of youth empowerment and of course being a youth myself it gives me joy to see my fellow age mates thriving and succeeding and if there's anything that I can do within my capacity to aid that then I am happy to share what I can so I wanted to make this talk very relevant to you, my audience, for today in touching upon topics as Iwakwatako, things that you can relate to because my struggles as a youth in the UK are mainly not really the same as the struggles of a youth or a young person in Uganda. So based on research that I have gathered through people, special thanks to Philip and Suvuka for helping me with a lot of information in this speech, uh, but also through struggles that I have observed for myself, I'll be giving my take on the four themes that I have found to be the most prevalent of problems for Ugandan youth to date. And these include unemployment, drug abuse and the party lifestyle slash culture, sexual harassment and also the need for guidance and counselling in the form of mental health. Now I'm going to start with unemployment. So the most recent statistics I found were updated in January 2020 and um, they say that 78% of Uganda's population are under the age of 30. Now, we're not the youngest nation in the world, that's Niger, who actually have 50% of their population under the age of 14, uh, which I thought was interesting. But I'm sure you can still appreciate that we have a very young nation. Now, I also found that of these young people, 83% are in informal jobs, 13% have no job at all, which leaves a remainder of 4%, merely 4% of Ugandan youth who are in secure employment. Only 4% of our youth are in secure employment. I'm just going to let that sink in for a moment. Now, one thing I do understand is that getting a proper job in Uganda is purely about who you know. It doesn't matter what degree you studied, how hard you worked for it, or how well you did, which grades you got. If you have no connections, you do not get the job that you deserve, which is sad. That's the sad reality of it, you know. Um, and there are many injustices in the world, and that is just one of them. So can we say that it is the system that is failing our young people? Or can we say that it is just a lack of opportunities? Tens and thousands of people are trying to eat from a basket that can only feed about 10. I'm talking about opportunities in the capital city. Are the jobs there? Maybe the opportunities just aren't enough. The supply cannot meet the demand. Which then doesn't surprise me, actually, that uh, most young people that I talk to actually think that when they go abroad that life will be better that they will be happier that they will have more opportunities now i'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news but unemployment is a global problem 
Let me give my dad as an example, Mr. Mochiri. You guys have seen him many times on my channel. You know him quite well. Now, um, he has been here for over 30 years. He has a degree from London. He studied engineering. He's a chartered engineer. Respectable profession, right? But currently, he is unemployed. Currently, I am unemployed, if I use myself as an example. Now, I know that I am still a student, but I currently have no source of income. So, I'm looking for a job, but I can't find one. So, what am I trying to say here? What I'm really trying to say is that just because you get on a plane and you go to a first world country it doesn't mean that you're then going to be sorted you're then going to receive all the opportunities that you deserve and that you're looking for in summary i do not think that our young people leaving our country is the solution to uganda's problem with youth unemployment now i do not have all the solutions i'm not saying that i have all the answers but my suggestion here is just to widen your view look for opportunities elsewhere instead of everybody leaving the villages to come into kampala where we've said that the supply cannot meet the demand how about we look at the rest of the country there's so much potential outside of kampala if we look into sectors like agriculture manufacturing entrepreneurship um quick example like if you go to the west of the country you'll find that they're doing projects there um where they found oil you know you don't have to be an engineer to be able to benefit from this project obviously the people that are out there are going to need shelter you see opportunity they're going to need food to eat opportunity they're going to need medical provision they are going to need a whole load of services so really it's just about being proactive it's about looking at where looking at different areas where there is opportunity and seeing okay what skills do i have how can my skills be of value and beneficial how can i capitalize on my skill just seizing any opportunity that you can and it doesn't have to be conventional you know i've seen so many young ugandans here on youtube even with more successful channels than myself youtube can pay you money these guys are making good money from youtube so maybe start thinking outside the box maybe you're not a youtube person cameras scare you okay do you have a talent can you sing can you dance can you play an instrument capitalize on your skills capitalize on what you have to offer the world and i know that can be hard but it's but it, that's with everything in life it's about sitting down and brainstorming and just seeing what you have to offer what you can do so essentially what i'm saying is that let's start to utilize the resources that are right under our noses that are right on our fingertips to create new opportunities maybe we can continue that conversation in the comments section because i know it's quite a wide topic okay now a very sensitive issue that i would like to touch upon which is also linked to unemployment is actually sexual harassment so people actually men in positions of power who have these opportunities and jobs to offer end up abusing their power and taking advantage especially of young women and girls promising them jobs in return for sexual favors now you guys might be thinking why is she coming on here to tell us these things we already know actually there are a lot of people who don't know these things so i'm here to raise awareness at the same time empower you guys on the real life issues that you're going through because in order to empower somebody and lift them up you have to meet them in their space of need right where they are and help them build that bridge of relations so that's what i'm trying to do these are the things that our young girls young women are going through right now okay and it is morally wrong on no moral level is it okay to exploit somebody who is in need for your own gratification another thing this does is that it encourages the spread of diseases that uh, uganda is terribly suffering from hiv aids and other sexually transmitted diseases but gamba all it does is create more problems on top of the problems that we already have and in no way does it build us as a nation or as people so young people let's be agents of change when you end up in a position of power do not allow these patterns to continue
starting with yourself do not be afraid to speak up when you see your colleagues encouraging or taking part in such practices and ladies please do not be afraid to say no I know it may seem sometimes as though maybe you have no other option as if, if you turn down this opportunity then you like there's no other hope for you but darling the honest advice I'm going to give you is that your dignity and your health is not worth that compromise I can promise you that there will always be another way Okay, that is a very heavy topic. So I just want to lighten the mood a little bit for you guys. Now, in talking about an issue that is still an issue, but a slightly more light-hearted issue, and that is party after party after party after party. Pate after pate after pate after pate. Now, I'm sure you guys are very familiar with not only the song, but the lifestyle the lifestyle of a young ugandan <laughs> and it is no secret that aside from these crazy lockdown times that we're going through the normal situation in uganda is that the clubs and the bars are open monday to monday via wednesday you guys know what i'm saying there is not a day of the week where you will not find groups and groups of young people that are out just partying their lives away now don't get me wrong i am an advocate for being happy and doing what makes you happy and enjoying yourself in fact i love going out i love having fun especially when i have something to celebrate there's nothing wrong with having fun i just want to make that clear okay when you guys see me out i don't want you guys to be like oh but jan you said this you said this you said there's nothing wrong with it however at the end of the day too much of anything is bad too much of anything can make you sick if i drink too much water i die even though we know that water is good for you right well as i've said there's nothing wrong with having fun however the question i would like to ask a young person who is caught up in this lifestyle is to ask themselves if i'm going out on monday i'm going out on tuesday i'm going out on wednesday thursday friday with my friends and i'm living my best life and i'm doing this because it makes me happy aside from partying every day or you know three times a week what am i actually doing for myself am i living purposefully is this everyday partying putting any more money in my pocket in fact in most cases i mean unless you're a party promoter and that's your business however in most cases it is doing the total opposite it is just emptying your pockets now, the important thing to understand here as well is that alongside the partying culture comes the issue of drug abuse. Maybe some people don't realise it, but alcohol is actually a drug. And it's a dangerous drug that can kill. Alcohol, weed, obenjaga, shisha, you name it. All of these types of drugs that young people have become dependent upon and addicted to. Now, when I talk about dependence, especially with alcohol, more per se, I mean that when you take alcohol out of somebody's life, they cannot survive without it. They develop withdrawal symptoms, you know? And someone could actually be dependent on these drugs without even knowing it why because it is masked and hidden within this party culture so what i'm saying here is that there are serious issues that even the people going through them are not aware of they don't even know that they have a problem they just see it as a way of life you know and in very extreme cases, actually, this is what leads to premature death. And they die just like that before they were supposed to. We've seen these things happening. And the sad thing, actually, is that I don't think this is an issue that is taken very seriously or spoken about enough amongst young people in Uganda. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there is somebody out there who can correct me and tell me otherwise. But from what I have seen, it's all just become part of the culture. Excessive drinking and partying has become very normalized. 
we would love to use that word normalized normalize this normalize that well we have normalized excessive drinking and partying and in fact actually that is one thing that ugandans are known for especially here in the uk like when you go to someone and you'd be like what is one thing that you can tell me about ugandans i can guarantee you that the answer would be they know how to party and they know how to drink now, I don't know if that's something to be proud of, but of course that is subjective. What I take pride in, somebody else might not take pride in. <laughs> but on a serious note, excessive drinking and partying, I believe, is actually a derailment from future planning. It creates a situation where, take a look at this, somebody who is actually earning a decent salary, instead of investing in their future and investing in themselves or even helping to develop our country, they spend instead on enjoyment co-enjoyment. Enjoyment co-enjoyment. It leads to unemployment. You guys know the lyrics, right? So taking a look at this person, right? This good money that they are earning doesn't get invested in their future, but on their partying lifestyle. They end up living paycheck to paycheck or day by day, or in Luganda, as we would say, zebakola zebaria. And actually, this is really bad because one of the most important parts of life is investing in your future and planning ahead. If you have no plan in life, what are you working towards? You're just letting each day pass you by? Okay, where's that going to end you up in 10 to 15 years from now? So the last thing I want to say about this little segment here is that really, young people, let's think about our future. Let's stop living in the moment and letting days pass us by. When we are young, time is everything. Time is so valuable. We have less responsibilities. And then you do not want to grow old and then have regrets wishing that you had used your time when you still had it to lead you to a better place in life. One quote I really try to live by is that every day do something that you will look back on in 10 years time and thank yourself for. Now is the time to create that foundation so that in 10 years time, you're happy with how you spent your valuable time and happy with where it has led you to. The final topic that I do want to touch upon briefly is mental health and counselling. So I do speak about my own experiences with mental health in a previous video that I've done. I'm going to link it here. So I do recommend that you go and have a watch of that video. Now, this is an issue that carries a lot of stigma. However, it really needs to stop being brushed under the carpet. Because physical health and mental health are equal. This is something that I need you who is watching to understand. They are just as important as one another. Mental health is a speciality of medicine. It's important. And we actually all go through a lot of issues in our mind, whether we want to label it as mental health or not. But we all go through issues, emotions, circumstances that affect us mentally and that we need support for. Now, here in the UK, that's something that they're very good with. You can get counselling services for free. Um, you can get therapists who can help you through all the problems that you're going through and help you to gain mental clarity with your life, which I'm actually very grateful for in this system, actually. However, in Uganda, I know that these things of like counselling, mental health services don't really exist. So what can we rely on then? All we really have is each other. We need to learn to be there for each other, to support each other through these issues. However, the barrier to this now is the stigma that exists. When somebody has a mental health problem, they're looked at sideways, like as though they are the problem, when that's not the case. So in order for the stigma not to carry on from our generation Onwards, still on the topic of youth empowerment here, young people, I urge us to educate ourselves on what mental health really is. What does it look like? What symptoms does somebody display when they are going through a mental health problem? You know, like on the street. Have you ever sat down to ask yourself, really, what is the name of this mental health disorder that these people are suffering from? 
that is causing them to act like that and what can we do to help these people to support these people rather than alienating them because it can happen to anyone it can really happen to anyone you have to go and say or you have to lose all these things no this is a medical problem going a world war or musuja that is how abo we value do you get it like So we need to educate ourselves. Let's learn to be there for one another. There are so many resources on the internet if you want to learn more about it. And mental health is actually an issue that has gained a lot of traction here in the first world. Na ye, mental health, yo, let me say this. Teso sola mumawanga. Na Uganda, etu kayo. So please, let's start looking into it. It's something that affects every one of us. So young people let's be agents of change as i said before let our generation be the one to eliminate the stigma let's learn how we can support those around us and how we can also get support for ourselves when we are faced with different mental health issues and this brings me to the end of my talk essentially in conclusion what i want to say is that i really want our generation to be the agent of change to stop these horrible patterns that are happening in our society for a better tomorrow a better future a better uganda that's what i want to see let's educate ourselves let's learn to speak up for those around us and let's not forget it's good to have fun but there is no need to overdo it everything in moderation and think about your future um finally the last point i'm just going to put out there is that remember that we were civilized people before the colonialists came and mentally imprisoned us into thinking that their ways are the only ways to success this is not true Uganda is budding with so much potential there are so many possibilities so while we can learn from the technology um and the advances of the first world let's remain educated in what makes us uniquely Ugandan our culture our values our welcoming hearts filled with compassion our generation has the resources and also the education so let's use what we have to achieve our own success and the success of our nation. Thank you for listening and please subscribe to my channel. I really hope that you have been empowered from at least one thing that I've said in this video. I want to see you winning. I want to see you thriving, succeeding and helping our nation to do the same. A better future, a better tomorrow. Thanks for watching. This is your girl Jan sending you all the love from London always. Bye.